Ouais. Allô? All right, excellent. Thank you. We can see it. Okay. Um, all right. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we've been doing for the circuit breaker period. Um, Engineering Good is the nonprofit charity based in Singapore that I volunteer with, um, and it's an entirely volunteer-driven, uh, individual-supported charity. Our um, objective is to work uh, with tech and uh, bridge the digital divide, bringing tech closer to the people who really need it the most. Uh, so in the past, we've been doing work for persons with disabilities, um, assistive tech, that sort of thing. Uh, but with the whole COVID situation, um, we had a call uh, from one of our beneficiary uh, voluntary organizations that uh, said they have a bunch of families that need laptops and uh, with the upcoming circuit breaker period, uh, kids are going to have to like stay at home and do home-based learning, and these families can't afford laptops. So, can you help us out? And so that's kind of where this um, whole thing started. Uh, and then we turned this into a campaign called "It Computers Against COVID," and this is the TLDR. Um, it started with a little like Facebook post and a WhatsApp message uh, that we put out saying, "Look, we need 24 laptops." And um, and that would be it. And so we called a bunch of volunteers, me included, uh, to try and you know refurbish the donated laptops and you know fill that 24 laptops before the circuit breaker started. And then the families would be able to do home-based learning. So the idea was you know we'd volunteer for a couple of days over the weekend, and that would be the end of that. But you know one thing led to another. Um, the number. Of of, uh, donors also went up people who had devices, uh, people who are, well, most Singaporeans, I think have more than one device at home. And so they were willing to um, answer the call, they donated laptops. And, you know, over the course of a month, we involved 100 volunteers, and 1,000 laptops were donated, refurbished and delivered. So it's been quite an adventure, but uh, there's more to it um, and I'd like to get into. We got a whole bunch of media attention uh, and we weren't entirely sure what to do with it. Uh, the idea was very simple, um, but you know, the way it turned out because it's a community sort of uh, effort, um, it was a little bit more complicated than that, which got even more complicated because of the circuit breaker period. And then, you know, everything had to move to Zoom. Uh, and then it got even more complicated after that once the engineers got involved. <laughs> Um, the logistics of the which I think uh, is a talk for uh, another time, uh, but it was quite interesting. The idea was instead of, because we couldn't have a central location, we had uh, people who wanted to donate their laptops, to have a volunteer go collect that laptop from that person and deliver it to the nearest um, volunteer, like a tech person who was willing to spend some time and sanitize it you know inside out clorox it and then format it reinstall uh, windows and then send it for qc so um the logistics of sending things back and forth organizing volunteers that was a you know challenge on its own um but all of this was done in a sort of decentralized way where we had people who are uh, tech savvy shall we say uh um working from home and volunteering by taking varying levels of uh, functionality and cleanliness uh, and then you know refurbishing them um, uh, when they had a uh, time to work on it some of them were really quite icky and not just on the inside but also the outside so yeah the volunteers um uh did uh wonderful job and you know all of this uh, played out um in a sort of like a organic kind of way where um as we were doing this and sharing this on facebook more people came forward to donate and uh, more visibility meant more logistical challenges but also that meant more devices uh going to 
um, beneficiaries. Um, this is kind of what it looked like on the inside once the devices were um, like reformatted uh, and installed with uh, Zoom for home-based learning, it would come down to a central location, uh, which is where I am now, and it would be quality control checked, as in we'd run a script that would uh, ensure that all of the software was required, that it was there, and then it would be um, uh, tested before it went out. Um, so that's how we've been doing most of, of the laptop refurbishing. What I want to try and focus on uh, in the next 10 minutes is uh, the salvage garden. So as part of um, the uh, computer's refurbishing process, a lot of the devices that were sent in to us uh, were not in working condition. And uh, those just got set aside. You know, priority uh, was to turn around the devices that could easily be reformatted and uh, sent out. Um, but uh, the ones that couldn't be powered on uh, didn't have a charger or, you know, looked a little bit uh, aside. Uh, some of them were a little bit too far gone. But, um, we, didn't, <laughs> we did have um, labels that came back from uh, pieces of, well, some, some of our volunteers sent us little labels, you know, uh, uh, saying what condition they were in, uh, but others, you know, you could just look at them, uh, it was quite bad. Um, but yeah, the idea was to try and salvage these as much as possible, uh, and the quickest salvage was to, you know, just plug in a missing power adapter, turn it on, and then call it a victory. Um, but um, the pile of laptops grew beyond what that tiny little space could handle. And so we were lucky enough to um, uh, have um, a space donated to us, which is where I am now, which is the Football Association of Singapore. We are at Jalan Besar Stadium. You can see that behind me. And the stadium uh, was shut down, like completely turned off uh, for the better part of the circuit breaker. They only recently started some kind of exercise. Um, lots of healthy people on the field. But um, we've been using this room as a salvage garden, which is like to try and we repurpose the space to um, do exactly this, which is, you know, organize things, get a way to have um, as many devices saved from the e-waste pile uh, and put them back into circulation. Um, so we came up with the plan, which is, you know, not as... It, it, yeah, it, it took a lot of iterations to come up with a process flow to sort of triage which ones um, needed to be uh, fixed first and which ones needed to be fixed later, what steps to follow, yada, yada, whatnot. I'm not going to go into detail on this, but I just wanted to point it out, point out things like, you know, netbooks. An emotional attachment to these devices or what, but, you know, they were put aside to a separate pile. We'll get to them when we do. Um, so there's a conversation there about like using Google um, Chrome OS, but not important because it's not relevant to um, home-based learning. The computers that have Windows XP on them were set aside because they're probably too old or too slow to handle Windows 10. Uh, and Windows 10 was sort of like the baseline of what we wanted to uh, give most of these um, home-based learning students. Um, and the rest is to sort of just troubleshoot um, which um, well, what process to follow so we could involve more volunteers. Um, and so volunteers got involved. Uh, a yoga mat was installed, which required uh, somebody with patience to deal with the pile and then organize them in a way that not just one person, but, you know, a, a community of volunteers could handle. And the idea was exactly that. You know, you have uh, multiple um, devices of the same model and all three of them um, had various problems. So we pull out the parts that uh, are functional and then at least do one of those three that can be, you know, sent back into circulation. Um, the Macs uh, turned out to be a lot easier to handle because of the consistent hardware, uh, relatively consistent, I should say. Um, uh, so, yeah, doing things like screen transplants takes a lot of time and effort and patience, but it is possible. 
uh, I mean, it's e relatively easier to do on Mac than it is on Windows systems. Um, so for the devices that couldn't be salvaged, we harvest them for parts. Um, so the screens, not as important, but the one, uh, keypads, not so important, but the ones that are the most important are being protected by our uh, accidental volunteer in the middle there. Um, the hard drives and the... We salvage the, the uh, license key from behind uh, most of these devices. So uh, in order to get Windows 10, you need to have a license. We had a conversation with Microsoft, but they were not able to help us for administrative and bureaucratic reasons. But let's not go into that. Uh, so the quickest way we found to salvage um, and install Windows 10 was to pull out the license key from behind. This particular one says Windows Millennium Edition, being held by millennials. So I thought it was funny. But uh, we can't use this. Anything that has a Windows 7 or higher, um, Microsoft supports an automatic upgrade for free. So we use the Windows 7 keys, save them, and then install Windows 10 and use the Windows 7 key to have a licensed version of Windows 10 be sent out. So not only were we harvesting the hardware where possible, but we we're also harvesting um, uh, license keys, which uh, annoys me to no end. But let's not go there. Um, let's sort of spotlight uh, very quickly on uh, one little side project that came out of this. Um, while we were working on this, we came across a couple of uh, laptops that did not have a webcam built in. Uh, and um, the whole purpose of refurbishing these laptops was for home-based learning, and they need to be able to do Zoom. So uh, there was a separate um, group of volunteers who handled purchasing, and we bought a whole bunch of USB webcams, and then we supplied those uh, together with the laptops that didn't have any. But on the side, we found that there was a, an instructable um, that would allow for these, these sort of built-in webcams uh, that we were pulling out before you know, sending the pieces off to e-waste. We're pulling out these uh, built-in webcams. And it turns out that it is possible to um, con Uh, and this is kind of what I want to focus in on because you'll see there there's a diode and all the other cables are standard USB cables. And there's one on the right-hand side in the bridge. So that's the common ground. So you've got two uh, data cables in the middle and then you've got um, five volts on the left and uh, positive on the left and then common ground on the right. So that's all you have to do to solder on a USB cable to an internal webcam to convert it into an external one. Um, I mean, we didn't actually send these out to the kids, but it was a whole lot of fun to work on. And it got a bunch of people asking questions about, you know, wait, hang on, what is USB? And how does the protocol work? What's the protocol? So it was, it was a lot uh, of fun, very interesting then. Um, yeah, so that is uh, one of the side projects. It's just a quick video here of a demonstration. What I wanted to highlight here is that even though it's all hacky and sort of soldered on like that, um, it requires no drivers. All you got to do is plug it in the right way around. Uh, and even on a Mac, it just, you know, it just works. It's automatic. So it was surprisingly easy to do, uh, requires very little like soldering skills and you can do fun, infinite videos. Okay. One more side project, um, that came out of this whole salvage operation was the screens. So a lot of the devices came with like a black hole in the LED panel. Like for some strange reason, there would be a giant like black hole and everything would look like uh, something out of Interstellar. Um, so those are not salvageable. And then providing um, an external monitor, because the rest of the device works perfectly fine. You've got a perfectly functional hard drive, perfectly functional CPU, all of that. So it seemed a bit of a waste to get rid of the whole thing. So one of the volunteers pointed me to a project that could uh, reuse these screens in a sort of, you know, not particularly practical, but fun and interesting way. Uh, if you separate the layers, um, you get like a Fresno lens um, and there's like a backlight and a diffuser. So all of them can be used uh, for you know various things. 
but if you look at what we did with this, well, hang on. Yeah, so there's a little bit of um, circuit bending involved uh, where you have to identify on the board uh, where the um, power works, uh, where, the, where the power goes in. Um, and if you put a series of resistors in the right place, you just have to look at the tech spec, uh, sorry, the, the sheet. And uh, usually, depending on the LCD panel, the LED panel, uh, it's not that difficult to do. Uh, in that, uh, and provide power directly to it, um, it just turns on the backlight and you can get rid of the um, LED in front. So it's always on as soon as you plug in uh, a DC jack. And this is, you know, a DC power adapter from one of the uh, donated laptops. So then what you wind up with is uh, kind of a, it's just a, it's just an LED panel light, uh, which you could use as like a whatever tracing backlight, whatnot. Uh, but that's kind of not the point. The point was that, you know, you've taken e-waste um, and turned it into something that is like a cardboard prototype or something useful. So um, uh, we've been sort of ex exploring uh, side projects, but um, there are more and we haven't had the time and patience to do that because the objective was to try and salvage as many laptops as possible. So we might you know, what would have been e-waste. Um, and that uh, went on for a while. So we did 150 because, uh, you know, we could. And then that went on to 200. And then now we've got over 300 um, salvage laptops that went back into the uh, cycle. So um, over the last two and a half months, we've uh, sent out 2,000, 2000 over 2,000 laptops. Um, uh, together with the whole salvage garden thing. Um, it's been quite a mad circuit breaker period, to be honest. Um, but uh, it's all about, you know, uh, trying to fill in the gap where um, the government's policies, which provide uh, PCs and laptops to students who don't have them, are not able to cover. And more seem to keep coming forward as time goes on. So what we've decided to do is uh, continue this uh, a little bit beyond just the circuit breaker period. Um, and we've turned it into um, sort of an educational program um, uh, through the maker space concept, but you know, because it's, it needs social distancing. So we haven't quite figured out how we're gonna do this. It's probably going to be like um, through Zoom like sessions uh, but the idea is to have a space where people can uh, take the laptops that are left over, which are, you know, the XP pile. And uh, since these are probably going to wind up in uh, being collected by an e-waste recycler, um, we can use these as a way to give it to somebody who's interested in how a device works and they can take, an, take it apart. We can point them to, you know, how things work and they learn by doing rather than, you know, listening to uh, me talk all the, all the time. Um, so yeah, so that's the intention with Salvage Garden. No, um, with a combination of like online sessions and uh, something hands-on. So we're working that out now. Um, we have to move out of this space and give it back to the uh, Football Association because, you know, uh, yeah, um, they need it back apparently for whatever reason. Um, and so we're moving to a new space and we're putting together an education program um, and uh, if you are interested in helping out, um, my email address is on the screen. Questions, comments, intel? Great. Th thank you. Th thanks for what you do. So uh, as we are a bit tight on time, uh, please leave questions after the talk. So let us move on to the next speaker. So. I hear Bob is here. 